As we continue to focus on our state legislature, I am so happy to have Representative Liz Bolden from Rochester with us. This is her first term at the state capitol. And Representative Bolden, let's start with that. How have things been going and your expectations? Have they been met or did you not know what to expect? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm, I'm happy to be here and to chat with you. Uh, you know, I wasn't quite sure what to expect if I'm being very honest. And so it is going really well. You know, we're in this different virtual world. So it looks different, uh, you know, for folks who have been in the legislature for some time, it looks very different to them, but this is the only way I know it. And so uh, things are going very well from my standpoint. That's great. The governor today came out with uh, the next phase of those who can be vaccinated and where things stand with our vaccination rate in Minnesota. I want to address that somewhat and your thoughts on where we have come from with the vaccinations only in about a couple of months and where things are at right now. Yes, I will say the news today is very exciting that we are moving in the direction of being able to get more and more people vaccinated. As we know, that is our path uh, to you know, being able to be close to our loved ones and, and doing things that we want to do. And so I am really excited that we are moving that along. You know, the, on the supply side, we are getting more and more uh, vaccinations uh, you know, to be able to get, get those two folks. And so I think I just am really encouraged that we're able to move to the next phase and, and would just encourage folks to go to that vaccine connector get signed up so you can get information uh, when it is your turn so you can get a vaccine. You spent uh, many months campaigning uh, taking the seat over from Dwayne Sock who didn't seek re-election. Uh, you had a town hall over the weekend. I'm wondering if anything has changed from what you've heard from constituents when you were campaigning to now being in the legislature for just two months. Yeah, so it's really important to me to hear from constituents and voters and folks across the district. And so that was one of the things I actually really valued the most uh, during the campaign was being able to connect with folks and to hear. It really just felt like such an honor to be sort of invited into people's lives and hear what is important to them and what matters to them and, and what they need. And so I am happy to continue that now as I am uh, holding this seat, it's really important to me to stay connected to folks. And so, uh, yes, last weekend uh, we had uh, our second town hall um, since the session has started and, and we'll continue to do that. Um, it's, uh, again, we're sort of in this virtual world and so not able to be, uh, you know, in the same spaces right now, but, you know, there's advantages to that too, that it, it makes it more accessible to people um, in some ways that it wouldn't be otherwise. And so, you know, the things that I am hearing from folks now are uh, very much similar in many ways to what I have heard over the last years. You know, we are still, uh, you know, things are still very, very difficult for many folks. The pandemic has sort of highlighted many of the inequities in our society that have always been there, but are, you know, more pronounced now. And so, you know, this last year has been really, really hard for many people. And so uh, while there is light at the end of the tunnel, uh, certainly with vaccines and we are moving in the right direction, um, still just, you know, hearing from folks how difficult things are. And so then, it, you know, my priority is making sure that we are legislating and, and doing work that uh, is, you know, taking care of everyone to be sure that we, you know, everyone has the ability to be cared for and safe and thrive. Let's talk about some of those inequities as you are doing work uh, at the state capitol. When we hear about uh, there's such a large gap between who has access to the vaccine, a lot of people are thinking that's a bigger problem in the metro area, in the Twin Cities. How does that relate to Rochester and where we're at with vaccine distribution? Well, I would say the inequities we have in our systems are not uh, necessarily an issue of geography, that it's, you know, something that is just happening in the Twin Cities and not here. You know, we have inequities built into our systems, our healthcare system and our educational system. And so as we look at the vaccine rollout, that is definitely something that needs to be on the radar. And I am uh, hopeful and grateful that there is more discussion happening around that. And we are starting to get more uh, information and data um, looking at specifically that because we we know there are uh, racial inequities within our healthcare systems and so we need to and we, we know that uh, COVID you know has had disproportionate effects uh, on our communities of color and so that is something that we uh, you know cannot shy away from we need to address that and and um, you know do things intentionally uh, you know to improve that.
Yeah, and there's another topic that is either a source of contention, a source of importance on the federal level and on the state level. If I can get you to just hang with me two minutes, we'll take a quick break. I want to come back and talk about the minimum wage and what's being done at the state level with that. We'll be back in just two minutes. Again, I am continuing my conversation with State Representative Liz Bolden, who is uh, at the state capitol up in St. Paul right now, and there's a lot of committee work that is happening these days and today. Uh, I do want to touch on the minimum wage. Liz, th this past weekend during your town hall that you had with Representative Tina Liebling, um, the minimum wage was discussed. I liked uh, what was being said. Uh, the federal minimum wage is just over $7. It hasn't increased with inflation, so there has to be an increase. Representative Liebling said it's hard to swallow. She understands that, that there's going to be uh, a large jump. Um, but still, $15, uh, according to her and to you, um, isn't enough for people to live on. Walk us through kind of what was talked about uh, at the town hall. Yeah, so as we are, you know, thinking about the, the minimum wage and, you know, just what it, uh, you know, what is a living wage for folks? And so if we look at even, you know, $15 an hour, that, um, you know, results at about $32,000 a year, you know, that is not uh, unreasonable. And so certainly we need to be thinking about, you know, what is a living wage for folks? What do people need to, um, you know, have, have what they need to be able to thrive? And so uh, the discussion, uh, I agree was a great one around you know what does that number look like and so we're talking right now about a $15 an hour minimum wage however if we followed it with inflation we really would be talking more about a $22 uh, an hour minimum wage and so I think uh, as was discussed you're right it is sort of a big jump at this point and so I think the smart thing to do moving forward would be to tie it to inflation so we have sort of those gradual increases all along, it you know it's been uh, so long since that we have increased that wage. It just it doesn't make sense that, that we haven't done it to this point. We need to do it now, and we need to continue to do it into the future. And I know that you hear from small business owners, and they're the ones who are really going to struggle with having to pay that minimum wage. So, what are your discussions with them? And moving forward is one thing, but having to swallow that big of a jump for these small business owners, as they say, is going to be hard. Again, I think that's a case to be made moving forward to have it uh, increase, you know, stepwise all along, so we don't have these huge gaps, you know, uh, for, uh, you know, years later. I think there is something to be said for having it uh, again, having sort of a stepwise implementation. So it, it's you know n nothing that maybe happens overnight. I think those are discussions to be had. Uh, I also would say that it is economically sound uh, for businesses to have workers who are paid a living wage, and, and that is what I hear from um, small business owners that they want to be able to provide um, you know a living wage for their workers. And so uh, you know we need to continue those discussions to get there. As we know, this legislative uh, session. It is a budget year, and so a lot of talk is on money and funding for uh, in, in various uh, places. But with federal money coming in and the stimulus package close to being passed on the federal level, uh, where are we going to be sitting with budget allocating money? We have a surplus right now that uh, in Minnesota, and that's good news. It is good news and sort of the outlook and the picture that we are dealing with in the legislature has, you know, shifted a little bit over these last few weeks. Initially, we were thinking we would be looking at a deficit and then it sort of shifted to a surplus. And now we are looking at having this federal money come in, which is excellent. So that's all very good things. I also would just note that it does not change the fact that so many Minnesotans across the state still don't have what they need. And so we need to be looking at making investments. Um, you know, in the people of Minnesota to be sure that they have what they need in terms of education and child care um, and health care. And so that sort of is my focus is to continue on, uh, you know, uh, focusing on the needs of what people across Minnesota need and, and what that the way we do that is making sure that everyone pays their fair share. There have been a, a lot of a very the very wealthiest Minnesotans over this last year um, have have done just fine. And so uh, through them paying their fair share, that is how we make those strong investments in our communities. Representative Liz Bolden, it is my first conversation with you since you took office. I enjoyed it very much. I appreciate your time and, uh, of course, the work that you do. Politics, especially these days, not an easy field to be in. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll be back.